What can a pound coin get you these days? Maybe a newspaper or a cup of tea. Or how about a warm, fuzzy feeling that comes from doing good? That's all right. All yours for a flick of a pound coin to a beggar. My name's Raya, and when I walk around London and someone asks me for some change, the compassionate side of me finds it hard to say no. For me, giving money to beggars is a win-win. Someone who's clearly in need gets a little something, and I feel good for helping out a fellow Londoner. But is it really that simple? Like you, I've read reports of begging gangs and scams. I've also heard that giving money to people on the streets of London is probably just funding a serious drink or drug habit. The thing is, I want to do the right thing by beggars. So how do I know I really can? I'm making a film about beggars on the streets of the city and what it's like. Not like Benefit street. street. No, 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 not Benefit Street at all. In this film, I'll be finding out firsthand what life's like on our city streets. Thank you. Finding out what damage my pound coin could do. I'm dying anyway, so it doesn't matter. And ultimately, work out which beggars genuinely deserve my money. It's organised. It's organised crime. When I'm out and about in London, if I'm asked to give money to a beggar, I always will if I have it. I didn't used to. When I was 18, I went and spent a couple of months living and working in a homeless shelter. And that experience with the people that I met and the stories that I heard about their horrific lives just made me feel like if you have it, you should always give it. I've been walking around central London throughout the morning and just come to Tottenham Court Road and come across somebody who is begging, but he doesn't look like he's in a very good place, so I'm just going to leave him to it and keep searching for somebody else to speak to. There you go. And, um, I was just saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Yeah. And within three and a half weeks, the public, I received at least £1,500. Just yeah, in, 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 yeah. I had to give food away. I had even had to give money away as well. I was getting more money than the people that were begging for drugs and, and alcohol. Why do you think that is? Why do you think uh, people are giving you more money than they were giving to other people? Because I'm 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 polite. I'm I'm honest, you know. And plus, my dog was get, <laughs> getting more response than me. <laughs> So yeah. having a dog has helped you? No, well, no, it hasn't at all. <laughs> no, because he's getting more food than me. He's getting more accommodation getting offers. more love than you. Yeah. <laughs> if Chester could make £1,500 in three weeks, it sounds like Londoners are pretty generous when it comes to giving. If I see someone begging on the street and they look, especially in winter if it's raining and stuff like that, I definitely give. I do tend to give money. I actually tend to give money when, I, when, I, when I've had a few drinks. I start feeling a bit more guilty about society. I kind of feel like we should be a bit of shame of ourselves, to be honest, because um, we're allowing it to happen. We're all just kind of standing by and going, oh, well, I'm all right, aren't we? I'm guilty as well. I suppose it depends on the, how they actually beg for money. If they're quite aggressive, then I'll walk away. I'm not interested. But if they said in sort of a, a soft way, then I'm happy to give them some money. It's really nice to see how many people would be willing to give, but I've got to be a little bit cynical and say, if you're being asked on camera, would you give to someone in need? You're not going to really admit that you wouldn't, would you? I just met a homeless man in Brixton called Paul, and something he said was that lots of people giving him money um, are Muslim, that he has a Muslim man that gives him breakfast every single day. And I just wonder whether faith is one of the reasons that people are generous on the streets of London. People give for all sorts of reasons, and quite often they're motivated by their religious faith. They might be adhering to a certain policy of their religion that they have to give 10% or something like that, or it's actually just how they feel in themselves, but their religion is part of that. So somebody may be motivated to actually think about, this is what I'm going to do. I, I walk to work every day, I see this particular individual begging, and this is my opportunity to actually do what my religion requires of me. And people are doing it willingly. We have to say that people aren't doing it just because their religion says they should do this. It's a deep down sort of like human bit of them that actually wants 
wants to do that. It's an important part for a lot of people. It colours what they would do normally, but actually if they can kind of wrap it up in their religious beliefs, I think that helps them as well. Due to a Muslim's duty to be charitable, they've even become a target for some aggressive beggars. But regardless of our beliefs, we seem to be instilled with a sense of duty to help those less fortunate. You shall give the due alms to the relatives, the needy, the poor and the travelling alien. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. But be grateful that the poor man is there, so by making a gift to him, you're able to help yourself. It is not the receiver that is blessed, but it is the giver. Blessed is the godly person and the riches they possess, because they can be used for charitable purposes and to give happiness. So is it any wonder that when we see someone asking for help, we feel compelled to be a good Samaritan? I've just typed begging London into a search engine and almost everything that's come up says actually you shouldn't be giving your money to beggars. Not only is it a criminal offence, supposedly there are people who are making thousands out of begging every year who don't really need it, they're not even homeless. And also, organised crime. It's quite interesting to think that my change, my one pound, could be funding criminals in the capital. I think there's a lot of perceptions about people being on the streets begging for money that they don't really need because they've got a house somewhere and that they're just kind of taking advantage of the generosity of Londoners. Is there any truth in that? Yeah, there is truth in it. A lot of truth. It's just, I don't think it's as bad as people seem to think it is. You know, a lot of people on the streets of London are actually on the streets of London. It's not a blag or a way to make money. It is, you know. Do you find that when you are asking people for money that you generally will get enough money to kind of get by on a day or is it hit and miss? Yeah, most days, yeah. yeah. Most days I, I, I won't even have a problem because I don't usually ask for money. I sit reading a uh, book and I just get given it. I ask someone for a hot drink and they'll probably give me a bit of money. But you will never kind of actively ask, you're just going to sit no, there? No, if I get arrested for it. If you ask for money? Oh yeah, yeah. if I get seen asking for money I get arrested for it, yeah. I got arrested on Waterloo Bridge on my birthday two weeks ago. Yeah. I just sat down and someone took £40 out of the purse to give me it and there was a voice behind me said, no you don't, and I turned round and the police come up the stairs behind me, watched me talking to this woman and go to take money off her and arrested me for it. Even though you hadn't actually asked for that money? Didn't matter, I was still taking money. When people do give food or money, what do you think kind of makes them do it? What motivates them? I don't know, sometimes it's it they want to make themselves feel better. I hate to say it, but it's arrogance, ignorance. The really interesting thing about Tarek's story and his experiences of begging on the streets of London um, is a point he made about people giving money actually the real reason to make themselves feel better um, as a kind of self-centred um, generosity that they give money and they feel a bit better about someone on the streets of London being homeless and in need. People will give from a sense of duty. Now, it might be a duty to their religion or it might be a duty to society and humanity at large that they feel. They will give for reciprocal reasons, that if they see somebody down on their luck, actually, if ever they were in that position, they'd want to be looked after. And they may also give for just that sense of well-being that they actually get from giving. You know, that's quite common with a lot of people, that they want to give for the sake of giving because actually it makes them feel a little bit less guilty or it actually makes them feel good about what they're doing. But also maybe people will give for rebellious reasons which might sound a bit odd but it's about actually I'm told not to give to individuals on the street because it might go to drink and drugs but actually I don't want to be told what to do and I want to give I'm going to actually not go through the charities or the agencies or the church organizations I'm actually going to give to that person because it's what I want to do for that person we're told to give to a charity because actually if you give to an individual it'll just go on drink and drugs and that might not be the case. People are on the streets and you know hit hard times for all sorts of reasons. It's perhaps your choice that you make that actually that particular individual, I believe that the money that I'm going to give to them is going to go on their food, is going to go on their accommodation but I, I don't believe that that person is going to be using it for, for drink and drugs and it's then my choice to give to that person. It's kind of emphasising the belief that you have in that individual. 
Begging is still a criminal offence in the UK. But are beggars really doing any harm to anyone else in London just by asking for some change? I've come to meet Jack Hopkins, councillor for Lambeth. He's showing me an up-and-coming area in Vauxhall where begging is becoming a real burden for the local community. The bar down the road, beggars who get money from the hunters at the bar, uh, they might buy a couple of high-strength lagers on the way down here and then they'll come down this alleyway and they'll buy drugs. So, uh, off the main road, a little bit secluded, they'll buy drugs, they'll then go over there and use them, uh, shoot up, go to sleep or somewhere else on the estate. And we've got kids who come to this community hall to do choir, to do their music practice, they don't need to be seeing that. So this is Ange. Ange lives hi, on this hi, estate. She's on the Tenants Anthony. Association, but she also runs the community centre that we've just been to. What sort of things are you seeing outside the community centre as a result of the begging in this area? They sometimes harass the mums that are coming in with their children, and we did have a guy sort of wander into the building, and one of our colleagues that was there asked for money, and he was a bit frightened, so he mm. handed over five pounds, and you know things like that. And this is happening every single day. Every day, every day they come here. It's what they leave behind. We had an instance where one of the children picked up a syringe. Luckily, the child is OK. They went off to be tested and things are OK. But it's all what they leave behind. There's always been people taking drugs over the years, I know, but you'd never see them on the streets when I was growing up. It wasn't, as I say, I've noticed it probably the last 10 years, it's got worse. But here, last year and a half, it's really got worse around here, yeah. Do you think this is happening as a result of people in the local area giving money to beggars? Definitely a big um, effect on that, you know, people just handing over money. I mean, I used to do it myself personally, but then I got to the point where I thought, well, I shouldn't because I'm feeding their habit. Not nice at all. Not to nice at all. Deal with Not that, nice at all, no. no. Based on what we've just heard, it sounds as though the link between begging and drug taking in this area is really strong. The difficulty is, however, that if you're being asked to give money by somebody who's clearly vulnerable, you kind of feel like you can't say no. How do you deal with this issue compassionately? Yeah, I mean, it's really difficult. And I think we've always got to remember that you know, the beggars, whilst they might be causing a problem when they take drugs, they're still human beings and they've got really complex needs. And we've got the priority of making sure that people aren't doing what they're doing because we want people in the estate that we've just been to to be safe so that they don't have to deal with that. But we're also really mindful that we want to give people the help and support that they need to get out of that lifestyle so that they're not doing that. When begging leads to drug abuse, and especially around children, I can see why a community would need to take action. But surely not every beggar has a drug problem. I want to find out more, so I'm delving further into the murky world of begging. It's that organised, it's that cynical, you're being cheated. And maybe even have a go myself. I'm Raya, and I'm trying to find out which beggars I can give my pound coin to. When it comes to those who might be less deserving of our money, ex-copper Bernie Gravitt has a pretty good idea. When I give my pound to beggars on the streets of London, I do it because I want to make a difference and, and help change that person's life. How is that pound potentially doing the complete opposite in terms of crime in London? I think the first thing you've got to identify is that there's, there's three distinct groups of people begging on the streets of London. Um, there are people who are homeless, uh, whether by need or by condition. They might use it for uh, drug addiction. Genuine, I don't know if that's the right thing to say. Genuine beggars. It's genuine, it's genuine, isn't it? For the most part, I think they're just out to get some help. You then have professional beggars. And you hear those stories about the guy begging outside Knightsbridge or where it is that goes back to his 150 grand a flat. Which when you have people coming up wearing better clothes than you have on you, I mean, designer gear and they're saying, if you spare a pound. If you're saying I'm living on the street, you don't have a mortgage, you don't have bills, you don't need hundreds of pounds a day. Where is that money going? A third group of the organised criminal gangs. Romanian or Eastern European beggars that you see particularly around central London. There's foreigners uh, with the small children begging on the street. That's where the challenge for law enforcement comes, because you're being cheated. You're being cheated by the beggar who travels in from outside London, sets up on a pitch during the day uh, or the night, makes a load of money and then goes home uh, to actually a house, even though he's got a card in front of him saying, I'm homeless, you know, I'm hungry. These guys can make anywhere from £300 a day and there are reports of some of the professional ones who are earning £1,000 a day. That's where your money's going. It's going into someone's pocket by cheat, really. To think that people are earning hundreds up to £1,000 a day on the streets of London, 
just seems unbelievable, to be completely honest. It, it certainly is, and, and, and there are various tactics used to attract more and more money. According to Bernie, there are a few things beggars can do to maximise their takings. Location is important. Near cash points and tube entrances or other busy places where people might have change in their pockets. Eye contact, as well as politeness, makes people more inclined to give. A dog will help pull on Londoners' heartstrings. Ideally, they're small and quiet. A blanket is a good reminder that the streets of London can be cold and uncomfortable. A handwritten sign can inform people of your plight. I can't say that every beggar on the street isn't directly in need and isn't going off to, to feed themselves uh, and, and survive. And the problem is, is, is those genuine ones who may be out there um, collecting to do that are being undermined by the con artists. It's interesting that you mention organised begging. Um, I was out on Old Street and came across a guy who looked as though he was a genuine beggar sitting on the, on the ground asking people for money. Um, but something quite interesting happened. Let me show you. So it looks like a guy sitting on the ground asking people for money, asking people for help. He's making eye contact, his right hand's yeah. coming up, so yeah, he's definitely begging. And then slightly closer look at this. You see him kind of give a thumbs up to somebody, get up, dust himself off and walk off. And the other thing about him, he's actually quite tidy. He's got a backpack, he's got no blanket, no sign, no cup. Um, and he actually looks quite well dressed. The likelihood is that's organised begging. Yes, and whether someone had seen the camera or was acting as a lookout for him, um, for either the police or, you know, um, getting moved on, or the fact that someone was filming him, they were obviously uncomfortable with that and he moved off. It's that organised, it's that cynical, and it's the same thing that's behind it is economics. It's about how to make the most money uh, on any given day. With potentially so much money up for grabs, I want to see how I'd fare as a professional beggar. I think I might scare people off if they've tried to come and give me any money. No makeup on at all. But um, that's what I'm doing. I thought it'd probably be a good idea to cover the dye. So a scarf to do the trick. And finally, a blanket because it's pretty cold out there today and spending the whole day sitting down in the streets of London. We need something to keep me warm. I think that's me done, ready to go. So I can't legally ask people to give me money um, because begging is a criminal offence, but what I can do, according to Bernie, is ask people to give by writing it down this sign. One of the things that Bernie said was really important is to be polite. Um, and so I'm hoping that a little smiley face might help people in London feel a little bit more generous today. Location being key, I've scoped out a spot on a busy high street, by a supermarket and next to a cash point. I think I'm set. Thank you. No speaking English. Hungry. Food. Money. So I've just spent the past two hours outside a convenience store seeing how generous Londoners are and two hours equals £1.45. So with Bernie's advice um, I'm going to up my game and uh, move to a tube stop. Maybe it was because I didn't look like a, a genuine beggar so um, I'm going to go and meet a friend of mine who has very kindly offered to lend me his dog to see if that helps pull on the heartstrings and perhaps to get a bit more money than this. Thank you. Can you help me 
get money. You're so good at that. Oh, for those big soft eyes, we did. Thank you. Hello. Don't you love my crew? <laughs> Thank you. You want to put those things away? We're um, making a film about begging. That is? Two police officers came over and told me that I kind of had to stop what I was doing and ask them what I was up to. Um, and when I explained, actually, this was um, a stunt for a film, the policeman said, oh, I thought you looked too clean. So quite a few people have walked past this afternoon and mentioned, isn't it sad that the dog's on the streets? Um, and kind of turning a blind eye to the fact that, as far as they can see, uh, I'm on the streets too. Because I just think, what kind of human being walks past another, ignores them and talks about how sad it is that the dog's on the streets? And also another comment, a man walked past and spoke to me in Arabic, and in my really broken Arabic of what I understood, he was asking something along the lines of I wanted help. And when I didn't respond in Arabic, he kind of carried on walking. And I wonder whether that ties into some of the perceptions that beggars are, I don't know, pretending to be Muslim in order to pull on the heartstrings of, of other Muslims and kind of lead into the faith aspect of, of being given help. Considering that I've spent four hours on the cold, dirty streets of London, um, six quid is not really enough to make me consider doing this as a profession. It's not a bad amount of money to have made and it could have definitely bought me a hot meal um, if I was really in need. I wanted to have this experience today to get a very little glimpse of what it's like for people who are actually begging on the streets of London. Um, and to be completely honest, considering the cold and the general response from people, a pretty intensive day. And I think me and Nala are ready to go home. <laughs> you don't want to go, you want to stay here? You made so much money, you're going to stay. Good girl. I wouldn't last long on the streets, moaning after just four hours. I also felt uncomfortable pretending to be in need when there are those who really are. The charity Thames Reach offered to take me to one of their hostels and introduce me to people for whom begging is a way of life. Welcome to Graham House, this is the Thames Reach Hostel. It's the first point of call for many rough sleepers. So we'll have outreach workers out tonight, scouring the streets, looking for people sleeping rough and they may well come to a hostel like this. Right. Uh, everyone will have their own room, they'll have a, their own support worker, and we'll leave people in with services that will help them if they have a drugs problem, maybe poor mental health, and we will help, to help them get their lives back on track. So let's come on through. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, how are you? Terrible. Terrible? No. Why? I'm dying anyway, so it doesn't matter to me. What the health problems do you have? I've got cirrhosis in the liver. Yeah. My kidneys are backing up. Oh man. I've got gold stones. Okay. It's a hard life on them. Are people ever generous though? Do they ever give you money? Yeah. But I try not to do it anymore. Why do you try not to do it anymore? Do you mind me asking? Because I'm trying to back myself up. I'm even slowing down not to drink. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying. Not for me, for the sake of the children. I'm not happy unless I make £20 an hour. I wouldn't make that amount of money on any job because yeah. I ain't got no qualifications. So you'd never make that amount of money no. if you went into the paid job, but you're going to make that money if you're begging on the streets of London. Yeah. If you're just sitting there holding a cup out and expecting people to give you money, sometimes you don't make as much. But if you give them a little story yeah, yeah, yeah. to make them feel sorry for you, yeah. obviously you get a bit more money. You just tell them what they want to hear sometimes. People ever come and yeah, give you yeah, food yeah. instead? You can't go hungry in yeah. London. There's so many places that you get food for nothing. Whatever people say, they're asking for money for food. What's the money for? Yeah, for drugs, drink, whatever. People give you money because the people care about you. And people just give me 30 pence or 50 pence and I feel bad. I mean, I feel shame of myself. It can be pretty degrading, but I'm not putting a gun to their head. If they don't want to give it, they don't have to give That's it. Right. Just because you've got a drug problem, don't mean to say you're a bad person and you commit crime. Yeah. What's it like living here? It's a place to die. Everybody using and everybody drinking, and it's a place to die around here. Yeah, it depends. Stop, if you want to stop, stop it, you can. You, you like, they've got the help to, to help you stop. Yeah. And to kind of get your life back on track. It's 
I've just been inside Thames Reach Graham House and met some of the residents and heard a bit about their stories. Do you know what's really interesting to hear? That the people that are inside that, that house are well aware um, that you do not need to beg on the streets of London for food, uh, for shelter, that the only reason, and they admitted it, the only reason they're out begging is to fund their drink and drug addiction. You can't help but kind of think twice about that sense of giving to people because you're helping them. Actually, are you? Or are you actually making their situation much worse? One thing I am certain of, though, is that these people are victims of their addictions, and I can't judge them for how they've ended up like this, even if they bend the truth a little to get my money. But are there other ways beggars are manipulating me to hand over my pound? Prior to the Olympics, there was a sudden influx of Romanian Roma, widely reported in the press, camping out on Marble Arch and down Park Lane and in the adjacent streets. Romanian Roma are a poor community, a vulnerable community. The gangs approach families who have got no income, they've got lots of children to feed, they live in poor conditions, and they say, well, give us one of your children, we'll take them abroad, and they'll earn money for you, and we'll send that back so you can buy food and clothes for your other children. And then that child is made to go out and beg and steal, and the money goes back to the gang. This is all driven by poverty, and it's driven by greed at the upper level. And these children can make £300 a day on the streets. Bernie shows me CCTV footage from a police operation investigating gang-related begging. Here's a woman walking down a high street with a pram surrounded by others she's working with. You can see her clearly begging a woman for money. Then another beggar puts on the pressure, begging the same woman again. Same beggar here, different day, different baby. Having spotted a man taking some money out, she sits the toddler up in a bid to make eye contact with him. This is a blatant bid to get a two-year-old to play on people's emotions for money. Now you see the toddler seeming to get a little tired, so tries to lie down for a bit. The woman is still working the mark, but as soon as she notices the child has slacked off, she roughly sits it back up to work. According to Bernie, this is clear criminal exploitation of a minor. On another day, the same woman is again caught on CCTV with a third child. This time, it's a one-year-old. This woman was eventually charged with child neglect, money laundering and human trafficking her own children, as well as a 13-year-old girl. During the arrest, the police raided the house where she lived with many others, but there was no sign the money they made was being spent on themselves. Any child or youth under 18 cannot, in law, agree to their own exploitation. So every, every Romanian Roma, every Roma, every person out begging with a child, whatever nationality, wherever they come from, is committing a crime of exploitation. From what you've said, it sounds like a lot of these people are as much the victim as they are the perpetrator of some of these crimes. Is there not a worry that if you don't give to the 13-year-old girl that's got a baby in her arms, when she goes back to the gangster in Slough or wherever it is she's going at the end of the night, she's going to face a really tough time because she's not made the money she's expected to make? The more money that kid earns, the greater value that kid's got to the gang. So what are the gang going to then do with that kid? What are the gang going to do about that kid's brothers and sisters that may still be in Romania? You know, if that kid starts earning more money for the gang, then they're just going to bring more in because it's simple greed. The link to child exploitation is shocking. But somewhere out there, there must be genuine people in need I can give my money to. My name's Raya, and I've made it my mission to figure out how to deal with begging in London. Who do I give my pound coin to? Who would you give your money to? I do give money, I do give food, I do give what I can, whatever I have in my bag. I couldn't just walk past and not give anything, regardless of their situation. And if it's genuine or not, I know that I've done what I can in terms of helping them. I think that a lot of the welfare changes and benefits cuts haven't really probably helped, because I think that's probably pushed a lot of people who were just about managing over into not managing. You see a lot of ambivalence to beggars in London and I think that's a great shame. It's kind of a, a sign of, of, of the times and of the, of the city that we live in. But um, I think we could all probably stop and take a little bit of time out and, and, and try and find a little bit more compassion. But for former cop Bernie, it's pretty obvious which beggars are actually playing a key role in organised crime. So we've come to Westminster Bridge and already just walking along, you can see kind of groups of people 
doing kind of card tricks. What was the three card trick, yeah, or, or the ball under the little bowl trick? I've had a quick look. There's probably 50, 60 of them here operating. I mean, we've seen one, two, three, four guys working, but we've got watchers on this curb just up the road. How is this linked with begging? It's the same gangs. The elderly women are out with babies begging, young girls are out with babies begging, teenage girls are shoplifting, teenage boys are handbag theft and pickpocketing. And this is where the older guys are working. Everyone has to make money. There's a lot of money changing hands. I saw tourists taking out £20 notes. You saw people taking out £20 notes. So, for instance, a blonde lady, she won about uh, £50 and put it in her purse. And then she walked away and is on her phone. She's one of the gang. But no one can win. It's a con trick. And suddenly they've all disappeared. Police van has come along, so they've all... Uh, How did they know that the police van was going to come along? You can see for 400 metres from here. So that's why the guys are working this kerb. But if we dispersed. stay here for 15 minutes, they'll all be back. And so the tourists, they're funding organised crime? Yes, and that's how sophisticated and how large these networks are. It's organised. It's organised crime. Bernie suggested I give my pound to charities, as they could provide all those who sleep rough with all the different support they might need. There are quite a few homeless charities in London, and I'm meeting Jeremy Swain, Chief Executive of Thames Reach, who run various services that help people who are homeless. You hear people talk about the different types of, of beggars there are on the streets mm. of the city. Is there any truth in that? Well, people usually see a separation between the ones they regard as genuine and the ones they wouldn't give money for. In my own view, I think that separation is very, very hard to make indeed. And, and all our research, and we've got the information from our, our work with the police, is that people who are begging on the streets of London are usually spending the money on crack or heroin. So that's the message we put out to people. If you give uh, your money to those people, it's going to go to dealers. You are asking people not to give, not yes. to help homeless people on the street yes. by giving them money. This is all about compassion towards the people who are begging on the street. That money is being spent on drugs. Given that pound, it's more than likely going to put them backwards, not moving forwards. I was out with one of our outreach workers who work on the streets at night, right the way through to the early morning. They were trying to find a woman who they knew they had a hostel space for. That night she could get into a hostel. Ahead of them, they saw her crouching down begging, and just before they got there, a woman took out from her purse a five pound note, gave it to that woman, and there was no chance then of that woman coming in that night because she had enough, it's a small amount of money, but it was enough then to go away and buy some heroin. We are talking, ultimately, about people with extremely serious addiction problems. We have to get people into treatment, and if we don't do that, they will die. There's outreach workers working on the street every night of the year. There's shared accommodation for homeless people. There's specialist accommodation for people with mental health problems and alcohol problems and drug problems. There's employment programs. There is a real network of, of programs. Now, do we need to improve? Could we do better for people? Of course we could, but the, the amount of vision is really fantastic and uh, you don't have to think that you're the only one who's concerned about that person sleeping rough. Is there not a sense that there are people out there who are genuinely in need, they're genuine beggars? Is there such a thing as a genuine beggar? I bought somebody uh, a cake and a sandwich the other day because they said to me, yeah, I want some food and I was happy to do that and you know, spent half an hour with them. But I think it's um, a, a very rash game, if you like, to try to think you know who the genuine person is who hasn't got a drug problem and who the person is who has got a drug problem. Now, I've worked in this sector for 30 years and I wouldn't take that gamble. They're not bad people, they're heavily addicted. When you're heavily addicted, you go to extremes. You've got to find a way. The crack addict who's walking beside you frantically down the street giving you some cock and bull story about needing the money to book into a hostel, and hostel was a free on entry, so we know that's not true, you know, is an ill person that needs help. But our job is to tell it how it really is on the streets of London. You know, in Lagos, it may be entirely appropriate to give to somebody begging. I don't know the situation there. I have no dogmatic view about it. All I can say is in London and in the UK, giving money to people begging is a very retrograde step indeed. I'm off to meet Jerry, a former beggar who, with the help of Thames Reach, was able to turn his life around. This was one of the areas where I was I spent a lot of my time, and that was great. To feed, to feed my habit, that was great. The more money I had, the more I could use. I was in a bad way. I was in a bad way, and it was... I got into something that 
I thought I'd get out of quite easy, and I, once I slipped into that pattern, I couldn't get out of it as easy as I got, thought I would. It, it sort of took over, and once it took over, there was I just didn't think I had a chance. So it was just a miserable existence, humiliating myself and trying to survive, really. It's, and the only way that I could do that was by, by sort of lowering my standards, my standards of life, because I wasn't brought up that way. I come from a good upbringing. My mum was a single parent. I had two loving grandparents. I sort of shut down when my mum passed away, and that's when when I hit. It, 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 well, it, my, rock bottom, my rock bottom started 17 years ago, and it just spiralled. I ended up putting myself on the street because I couldn't cope with life. Life on life's terms is it's difficult, and it's something that I'd never been taught. Never been taught, so I taught myself how to survive out here. It got to the point where my lung had collapsed, I had pneumonia, so it, it took me to near death. It took me to near death. 19 months ago, I went into a treatment centre. It's given me a life. It's one of them things that I, I didn't think I'd ever become a, a member of society. God. It's an achievement. It is an achievement where I've come from to where I am today. Thinking about where your life is now and that you're in a much better place, but thinking back to where you were and the sorts of people that were giving you money on the streets, what could they have done that actually would have been helpful in the long term, in hindsight? I could sort of point them in the right direction, but you can give someone advice, it's where if they want to take it. And a lot of us don't want to take it. We don't, all, all we want out of you is money. And how about when it comes to giving money? Would you ever advise people to give beggars money on the streets of London? No. If they're using, and a majority of them are, I'm not saying all of them, but if they are using, then then you're just signing their death certificate. Eventually, they'll end up dead. And that's no way to go. People have a chance to, to experience a life. I've, I've been given a chance to experience life. It ain't, it ain't great but it's a lot better than what it was. I'm a walking miracle, there's no two ways about it. It's, I thought I would die a using addict. Today I'll die an addict, but it won't be a using one. I think meeting some of the people that I've met so far today has definitely made me question whether I'd be as willing to give my pound as I would have done before this journey. And then meeting Jerry, hearing his amazing story of just completely turning his life around and I'd like to think that there are people out there like Jerry who can come through it. Even though I now have major doubts about giving money directly to a beggar, I do still want to help, but how? I think I tend to give more to the big issue people because at least it's going to a particular need. The big issue is sold to people who are homeless and vulnerable housed through a small network of offices here today we're in Vauxhall in London and this is a place where people can come sign up, they sign a code of conduct, we give them some induction and some training and we get them working on the streets of London. 12, 15 pounds. I'll just go and get your magazines. It's an opportunity for somebody to literally to run their own business, to start to plan their savings, to plan their sales and think about a future through earning a living. When you see somebody on the street with a Big Issue magazine and a badge, they are at work already and it is work that is so transformative and it's work that makes the whole difference between begging and selling the big issue. Big issue vendors are at work. Through the Big Issue Foundation we help get people back into banking, back into healthcare, back into accommodation. The whole purpose of what we do is to get people back into the mainstream and that starts with the sale on the street. Our code of conduct is really strict in the sense that we want to make sure that people are in the appropriate uh, place to be selling their magazine. You have to connect with the public, you've got to get a customer base, so you need to start talking to people, to start forming relationships, to make people laugh, to make them stop and actually be prepared to cross the social divide, to put their money in your homeless hand in return for the product that you've bought. So it's all about selling skills and that's what's so important because it equips people with something that, that they can use to move their lives forward. Payday, isn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah, we've so. got quite a few vendors out, so it's all 
Going Fabulous. good. Excellent. Yeah. That's really good to hear. So a member of the public, the big issue magazine costs two pound fifty, but we sell it to vendors for one pound twenty-five. So we're absolutely proud of going fifty-fifty with homeless people. It's knowingly undersold to people who are using it as a tool to make a living. So we keep it as cheap as we can and we make sure that our vendors can make as much money out of it as they possibly can. We always say to people, please take the magazine when you bought one, because it's a commercial transaction and what you're getting at the end is something that we really think you'll enjoy reading. It's a good deed when you buy it and it's a very good read. So you're doing all right, yeah? Is it going okay? Yeah, excellent. Stephen certainly makes a good case for the big issue concept, and I could see how it could help people begin to get their life back on track. Does the concept guarantee that money won't be misspent? I guess not. But then the same is true of any other commercial transaction. But if I take money out of the equation, how else can I help a Londoner in need? So I've come to Trafalgar Square to meet a group of people who volunteer to help people on the streets of London in an alternative way, and I think that's them. Hi, is it Catherine? Yes, it's Catherine. Is, Hello, yes. I'm Ray. Nice to Hello, meet you. Ray. How are you nice doing? Nice to meet you. So this too. is the pavement people. This is the pavement people. Yes. Tell me a bit about what you're meeting here to do. Well, what we do is um, we are a sort of alternative way of offering help and friendship to the homeless people. So what we don't do is we don't offer housing, which sounds a bit kind of contrary. We generally don't encourage giving money, but what we do do is we give time talk to people, sit and listen to people. We we'll give a cup of tea to break the ice and show friendship. But mostly it's about building up relationships, breaking the isolation that a lot of people feel when they're on the streets. Normally people don't speak to them. But pavement people will go out and we talk. Yeah. Do you all split up and go in different places? A couple in the of groups, city? yeah, about okay. three or four per group and then we'll go off round and then we'll all meet up in the pub later on. Right, okay. Yeah. So are you gonna join us and we'll come round and see if you Yeah, can well can I come along with one of the groups? Let's go. Go, come on. Shall see you later? Okay. See you later. Have a good have a good night. Come on, Doug. But it's really about the friendship. And if we have stuff to give, we'll give it. If we don't, we'll sit and have a cup of tea and a chat. Yeah. Do they often ask you for money or? Very rarely, actually. Um, very rarely. If they ask money personally, we, we don't tell the members of the group you should or shouldn't give money. But if someone says, what I say to our members is, if you want to give them money, that's your choice. If you'd rather not, say something like, we're not giving money today, but would you like a cup of tea? And that's it. We'll never have much more, more than that. I was staying over there, but some fella attacked me last night with a knife. Really? You all right? Have you had many people letting hello today? Is there many? No, I'll be to the biggest thing there. I have a bad day at work oh, okay. and I come out here and within 10 minutes I'm having a laugh with a homeless person who can still smile in the most terrible of circumstances and I feel great about it. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying doing what we do. It really isn't. Yeah. After everything I've seen and heard, I'm definitely now less likely to give whenever I'm asked. It's a very rash game, if you like, to try to think you know who the genuine person is. Those genuine ones are being undermined by the con artists. They're still human beings and they've got really complex needs. But I can't help but feel that it's wrong to stop giving altogether. For the 99 times my money could be funding drug addiction or crime, there is that one time that my one pound could really be going towards someone genuinely in need of help. And for that reason, I'll never stop giving completely to beggars when I see them on the streets of London.